And this is a uh, picture comparing the development of the, of the brain. Um, these, again, the picture on the left depicts a fairly healthy brain. Um, the picture on the right is a, well, is a Romanian orphan who was institu institutionalized shortly after birth um, and uh, suffered extreme deprivation in infancy. And it's, of course, it's interesting, the Romanian orphan uh, studies, which some of you will know, carried out by Professor Sir Michael Rutter, um, found, of course, that many of those orphans were actually getting food and drink and were warm and had, and, and had uh, shelter and so forth. But what they didn't have was any emotional input. They were neglected uh, to a, a fairly, very significant degree. And if they were not rescued before the age of two, this was a group of children who had very significant neurodevelopmental impairments. Um, and they suffer from significant cognitive and emotional problems. But they're particularly around the area of the front of the temporal lobes, um, regulating uh, sensations. Um, and a very important part of the neural connections between the frontal lobes and the memory, part of the brain that regulates memory, and the bit of the brain that regulates fear. Um, so damage like this is going to be a significant problem, lead to significant problems in mood and affect regulation. Particularly being able to regulate your anger and your fear is going to be jolly difficult for people with this type of brain. And here's a raw, even more extreme uh, picture. This is a, a very sad picture uh, comparing, just this is a straight uh, CT um, scan, showing the difference um, in size and shape um, between um, two, two children. Um, and the Harvard Center for the Developing Child reckons that neglect is one of the most toxic things that you can do to a developing brain. And that's important, I think, because in terms of that many of the, if we look at the adverse child experience, I've already seen the Florida offenders, but 40%, at least 40% of the violent offenders that we hold in our prisons have been in care. And now the care system may not be all that great, but you've got to think, of course, about why they were in care. And of course, one of the reasons that they were in care is almost certainly because they were abused and neglected. So again, if we're putting together somebody who's vulnerable in terms of adverse childhood experience, and we put them in a social structure where there's massive inequality, where there's access to weapons, where there are different types of identity for a homicide perpetrator, whether in relation to crime or to terrorism or to interpersonal relationships, what you've got is a meeting of risk factors that should worry us, that should worry us a lot.